the burn chamber and chimney and it's all complete um, so I had to go over all the welds with this tiny little welder three times in hindsight um, I probably should have just gone over it with a stick welder just for time and everything else but anyways it's done um, I, I had to go over all the welds um, three times on the quarter inch stuff on the upper chimney which was slightly lighter gauge I, I actually uh, left it with the one weld because I ground into them pretty deep um, replaced uh, I was using this stuff for the test burn this fake fiberglass uh, attic stuff but um, did uh, actually fill it up with uh, this vermiculite which is super cheap there you can see it I spilled some on the floor it's just very light rocks and um, I capped the top with uh, high temp uh, stove and furnace cement um, something I actually uh, definitely worth mentioning was um, I, uh, I put the fire cement on the bottom and I filled uh, the gaps here with the vermiculite and then I put uh, the, the um, cement on top, the fireproof cement on top and uh, fired it up to um, cure the cement and that was a mistake because uh, I guess there was some moisture left in the vermiculite and because I'd made airtight seal with the cement on the bottom and on the top uh, the steam had nowhere to go so I had this all nice and rounded and kind of aerodynamic whatever you want to call it and it just all pushed up and bubbled and cracked so I'll probably go over this <clears throat> with a stone grinder and then uh, re-cement it so it's a little bit more uh, you know just even all the way around um, one other mod I think I'm going to make but I'm I'm actually going to start working on the on the the chamber, uh, the secondary chamber, the heat exchanger, whatever you want to call it, um, next because I feel this whole system is done. It's got lots of options where you can draw the air from and everything. Um, uh, actually, th one thing I do have to do is I have to make a better grate. This is too, there's too much space in between these. Um, I got to make it tighter. The ashes fall down too easily I got to make it a little harder for them to fall down so that it retains a little bit more heat on the bottom but other than that other than this this thing's done uh, that being said uh, once I um, do get the burn chamber on I think I might make a secondary um, chamber here um, with another one of these for the side that'll be bigger and I think I will run the air for that um, from the outside of the garage so that I'm not actually using the air from inside the garage. Um, once I get it up and running, it'll make it a little bit more efficient and I won't be drawing air under the door jam and, you know, and the, whatever air leaks I have in the garage, it'll actually be feeding the stove from exterior air. So just starting the, um, heat exchanger and uh, started off with um, the top of this tank here which I'm going to use as a base because uh, this stove is going to be uh, flat top so I had this extra piece right here so there it is that's the base a little piece of two inch tubing uh, or inch and a half or whatever it is up to um, this here uh, which is the bottom of the uh, of the heat exchanger. I've cut my hole in the back for the uh, four inch exhaust, heavy gauge exhaust, uh, diesel truck exhaust, whatever. Um, one thing to note is I didn't put this uh, perfectly square uh, or in the middle I should say. I kind of kicked it to the back a little bit just because um, you know I think this thing's gonna be front heavy with this piece here. did the chimney um, just uh, it's cut a 45 slightly less actually this piece here is going a little bit more like this just so that um, 
any moisture does come back down the uh, chimney itself it won't pool back in this corner I was thinking about putting a valve in here but um, I figured that'll just rust up and uh, so I thought it would be best if any moisture does go in it goes into the inside down here as I will be taking this off for cleaning regularly and this is the most accessible place just um, also uh, put the uh, the bottom uh, into the curve of the top of the tank or the bottom of the tank which gives it a slightly bigger um, size so it uh, I think it's gonna help it uh, take it in just bent these pieces around I did water test it and had one leak up at the top I was having a hard time getting the uh, the welder in to it kind of on the right angle so um, but that being said um, did a little bit of um, reading and uh, started doing the technique where you're welding where you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth almost like a uh, figure or a cursive E and that's actually really helped I wish I'd done that kind of weld on this piece rather than uh, the three over it I was doing anyways uh, live and learn also just uh, cleaned up the lid a little bit and uh, got these pieces ready for painting so I'm gonna do them first um, I'll fire the whole thing without painting it just to get rid of some of the paint make it a little easier on my uh, grinding wheels but uh, I figured the doors and stuff I could get to painting while I wait for this uh, welder which basically I now realize I can weld about two minutes out of ten uh, before I, I don't know for the cycle period or whatever it's called um, but that being said it's working pretty good considering um, oh one other thing I'll admit it somehow I put the chimney on slightly crooked when I tacked it up it was straight but I think when I was pounding this metal piece back or I don't know what the hell I did it came out a little crooked so Oh well, measure twice, cut once, which is kind of what I did, but I still ended up with it crooked, so oh well.